Today we are going over Lightroom tips and tricks. Now I'm not sure how many, I know it's gonna be more than 10, but I don't know exactly how many, I'm just doing it off the cuff and we are going through this, so let's get started. Will Simpson here and welcome to Exploring Photography. Today we're going over Lightroom Mobile tips and tricks because these days camera phones are so good that you don't really need a DSLR or mirrorless to get started. Your camera phone will work just fine. These tips and tricks will help you in the editing process. So let's open up Lightroom Mobile and get started. The first thing is you can change the thumbnail size by simply expanding or contracting on the thumbnail. If you open up, it'll bring up the thumbnail and it'll make them bigger. If you squeeze the picture, it'll make them smaller. So that's a way to organize or to display your photos quick and easy. If you want them small, you want them big, totally up to you. The first trick is the white balance tool. If you open up color, you see this little eyedropper in the right side. If you click that, you can actually select the points on the picture to auto-correct your white balance. Just like in Lightroom, you simply find the spot that's a neutral color, let it do its thing, and then press the check mark, and boom, you have now corrected your white balance. Now you can obviously adjust it accordingly as you want, but if you wanna do it automatically, that's a quick way to do it, and it's just as easy as doing it in Lightroom, in regular Lightroom on the computer. The next tip is adjusting the sliders. Rather than just adjusting the sliders by pushing on the dot and moving back and forth, you can actually tap on the left and right of the actual bar. Now, if you, as you tap, it'll up it by 10 on the right, or it'll lower it by 10 on the left. Now it's different for every slider on like contrast, it's plus five. So I think it varies per slider, but if you tap on the left part of the bar and on the right part of the bar, it'll up it by small increments so you can make those micro adjustments that make those big differences. And if you just wanna completely reset it, just double tap on the actual circle of the slider and it'll reset it back to zero. Now this is one of my favorite, favorite little hacks that I found out. When you're adjusting the whites and blacks, you wanna adjust them to be appropriate for the max dynamic range. So, if you scroll down, it's in light. If you scroll down to whites and blacks, let's go ahead and do our highlights, let's drop them down, let's up our shadows a little to how we want it. And if you wanna do the whites, you can adjust them, but where's the proper point? Well, here's the cool little tip. Push on the slider, and then push on the photo, and then move it. You see how it adjusts? Look at that. Just like in Lightroom, you find the point where just a little white is overexposed, and then release. And then you do the same with black. Push on the slider, push on the screen with your other thumb or finger, and then slide it down until you see those blacks. And this photo clearly has no really dark blacks. So <laughs> that was a terrible example. But if we, let's say, adjust the exposure down here, and then go back to the blacks, and then do it, I'm sure we'll see them, maybe. Okay, there, okay, maybe, okay, all right, there we go, good. No, oh, there we go, we got a little blacks there at the end. So you see, there we go, there we go, there's some blacks. So that's perfect. So now we have our true white point set and our true black point set on the Lightroom mobile app, which is such an amazing feature because you can set all of your true whites and true blacks and get proper dynamic range on your phone. It's incredible, I love it. All right, so let's reset our exposure. All right, so now, we have our photo ready to actually get edited. We have our, we have our, um, our white points, our black points, our highlights, and our shadows set. We're not gonna mess with contrast just yet. We're gonna go on to the next tip, which is the HSL. So let's go ahead and go into color. Now, in Lightroom on the computer, you have your HSL tab, which is your hue, saturation, and luminance tab. In Lightroom Mobile, it's in color and it's mix. So press mix, and then you have your different colors that you can adjust. You can select your reds, your oranges, your yellows, your greens, and so on. Or you can click this little target at the top and then you can just touch what you want to adjust. So let's say I wanna desaturate the trees a little bit. I just touch on the trees and I pull down. If I wanna saturate them, I pull up and it just changes them just like that. Uh, in this case, I was adjusting the hue because if you look at the bottom here, it says hue, saturation, and luminance. So if I wanna adjust the saturation, so I click saturation, I click the target, and then I click on what I wanna adjust, and I pull down and up. You see more blues and greens, and it shows you what it's adjusting. So my blues, my aquas are at 100, and my greens are at 15. But if I wanna lower them, okay, now they're at minus 100 and minus 15, zero saturation for the road. But I actually like it a cool look, so I'm gonna leave it right there. Actually, that's a little too much. We're gonna leave it right 
there. I think that's perfect. Good, and that's how you adjust your hue, saturation, and luminance, and another powerful tool to give you those great edits. Okay, the next one is sharpening. So let's go out of this uh, by clicking the target again, and then press done. And then we're gonna go into detail, click the detail. Now, when you sharpen your photo, you can mask it. You can mask out the parts that you want sharp. So I'm gonna go ahead and add, I'm gonna look at the screen. As you slide the sharpening slider, it will adjust it. It's very minute, but if you look closely, you can see the adjustments. So I'm gonna add just about middle sharpening, and then on the masking, if you click the masking slider and then click on the screen, as you slide the slider and not move, once you stop, it'll show what you're masking and what you're not masking, just like in Lightroom. So you slide it, and stop. Good, so that's where I want it. I just want my edges sharp, but I don't want the sky or the road to be sharpened. So this is perfect, I'll leave it at that, and good. Close detail by pressing it again. That's looking really good. Now, your curves bar. The curve, tone curve is one of the most powerful tools in Lightroom Mobile and in Lightroom on the computer. So for the tone curve, we're gonna go into light and we're gonna click in the top right corner, curve. This allows you to adjust the tone curve of the image. So for example, right now we're in the RGB or the overall. Down at the bottom, you can adjust your reds. So if I pull all the reds out, it's gonna become like bluey green. If I do the greens, pull that out, it's gonna become purple because red plus blue is obviously purple. And if I do the blues, it'll become a yellowish, yellowish reddish, weird looking color. We don't want that. Uh, how I'm deleting this is by double tapping on the dot. That's another tip. If you adjust your curve and you really don't like it, just double tap on that specific circle and it'll delete it. Let's go ahead and adjust the curve. I wanna lower the shadows a little. I want to up the midtones to give it that contrast, that common S curve that you see or you will, and then boom, done. So press done, and there we go. We got our tone curve in, and that is looking good. If you want to see the before and after of your photo, at any point, just close the menu, and then push on the, the screen, and then before, after. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Uh, ooh. Looking good. The next tip is to use local adjustments. So on the bottom of the screen here, go to selective. Now this took me a little bit to figure out because it's very weird. So maybe this will help you out. So press the plus sign. The left one is your brush. The middle one is your radial adjustment and the right side is your graduated filter. So the first thing I wanna do is I wanna do a graduated filter from the top down. Slide that, go into light and then we're gonna darken that up a little. As you adjust it, the masking point where, the, where it's affecting will go away. So I'm gonna darken that up, good, and press the check mark, and then what it does is that closes the menu. So then you have to go back into it, still working on this. So press this again, add another graduated filter, I'm gonna add it from the top down, or from the bottom up. And again, I'm going to darken it. That's looking good. Okay, good. Now I want to add I'm just gonna show you the brush tool. I'm gonna just do a brush here, and I'm gonna brush right here because I want the road to be a little bit bright, just like that, and we're gonna add light, add a little bit of exposure just to kind of draw you through the image. Good, let's see how that's looking. That doesn't look good. <laughs> so we're gonna lower the exposure. Good, and then close that, okay, good. Now if you wanna delete it, you can click on these little squares. So let's say I didn't like this graduated filter, well I'm just going to delete. Oh, I just deleted them all. Sweet. Okay, let's go back into them. Uh, let's go, yeah. So if you don't accept the adjustments, then you delete all of the ones that you made in that session. It's kind of annoying, that's where I kind of fumbled. So let's go ahead and add that graduated filter back here again. Darken that up. Add our brush tool. And I think I'm just gonna actually brush right here where the light is, because I wanna use the natural light of the image. I don't wanna add any weird extra light. I'm gonna brighten that up just a shade. Good. And then we're gonna press the check mark to save those. Good, done. Before, after before, after, it's looking good. The next thing you can use is the healing tool. Now this is the spot corrector, just like in Lightroom. So we're gonna click the healing tool, we're gonna click this Band-Aid looking thing, and we're gonna 
we're gonna try and get rid of the car. Now how I zoomed in is I just, just like a photo on a phone, you just zoom in just like that, zoom out the other way. I'm gonna move this down here, match it up so we don't have the car. I think I need to move this over. So we're gonna select this one. Oh, no, we're not gonna do that. We're gonna delete it. If you, del if you have it selected, you just press the trash can and it deletes it. I'm gonna move this over. And I think I'm gonna make another one, try and fix. No, this is very difficult. My fingers are big. <laughs> so let's make another one. Let's move it up here. Let's move this there. Good, that looks better. And then press the check mark, okay. Good, I think that it's not perfect, but it'll work for this image. So now we are looking awesome. So here's our before, here's our after. I mean, this is this is all in the phone, so this is pretty freaking cool. The next tip, if you do an edit and you're like, man, I love this edit, I love these colors, I wanna save it, well, you can create your own preset. Click the three dots in the top, click Create Preset, name it Awesome Preset, and then let's say we're just gonna put it into a new group, and awesome preset group, hoop, check mark, good. And then scroll, uh, you press the check mark to save and then boom, awesome preset, saved an awesome preset group. Excellent. <laughs> Next step, if you do something completely wrong and you just wanna reset the photo all together, slide all the way to the right, press the reset button and you can reset adjustments. So your local adjustments, you can reset everything so you go back to normal. You can reset to when you imported the image or you can reset when you opened the image. So I'm not gonna do any of those, but that way you can reset to specific spots of your editing time. Um, and that's if you don't wanna just reset one slider. If you wanna reset one slider, just simply double tap on the circle and it'll set it back to zero. Okay, now let's go to the, the main feature and why Lightroom Mobile is actually so good. The Lightroom Mobile app has the feature to shoot raw photos. Now this is big time because I use an iPhone Pro. My camera does not shoot raw photos. Using the Lightroom photo, I can shoot raw photos. If you go into the camera, you get this nice view of my desk, my blank desk. <laughs> and then at the bottom left, you see HDR, click that. So you have the option to do automatic, which is basically just like using the camera. There's nothing fancy about it. You can use professional, which is a raw photo, or you can use high dynamic range, which actually gives you an HDR photo, which is multiple exposures combined into one to make a really nice raw photo. So I'm using high dynamic range and then taking the photo. So I'm gonna show you some photo examples up here and you let me know if you could see a difference. The big difference is in the editing though. So here are these photos. Okay, so how many did you get right? Be honest. Okay, good. So <laughs> at first you don't really notice a big difference right at the beginning. So let's look at editing them though. So let's take this photo here, which is actually just the one straight from the Apple iPhone camera. So we're gonna go here into presets. I'm not gonna do a full edit, I'm just gonna go into presets and I'm just gonna scroll through really quick. You see how these are not italicized, but these are? That means that Lightroom is saying, you know, those might not work fully. They might not apply the full effects correctly to this photo. So that means there's these three that may not work fully. It doesn't mean they won't work and you can't make them work. It just means that they're not work, gonna work fully for this photo. So let's go ahead and scroll through. Okay, this is one of the presets. Okay, that looks pretty good. That's not bad. But what I wanna do, because I've already done this, is I'm gonna use this one that isn't fully good, that is italicized. So we're gonna press the check mark, and then we're gonna go to the next one, and we're gonna apply the same preset. This one here is the professional, not the HDR. We're gonna do, see how they're not italicized anymore? That means that there's more data so they can apply the full preset. Apply that, good, that's looking good. And then we'll go to the next one. Okay, good, and this is the HDR version. Okay, so this is the professional one. This is the HDR one. They're very close, both raw images. So let's go ahead and apply this, the same preset to it, and boom, done. 
Okay, so let's look at, let's turn this sideways real quick so you can see. All right, so let's see, that looks pretty good. This is the HDR one, that looks pretty good. And this is the iPhone one. See, it doesn't look as good. And you can tell, it's a little, it's just, it, it's not looking smooth. There, there isn't a, a clean edit there to me. Like this looks very natural. The colors blend nicely like they're supposed to. Same thing here. This one here, it just looks a little choppy. It just looks a little high frequency, like too much clarity almost. But these look much better, much like the colors blended better. But that's the same with anything. If you take a raw photo over a JPEG, you're gonna have much more editing capabilities. That's why this is so, so important. You're now able to take raw photos from your phone, which is like, <gasps> Yes, now there's no excuse for you guys who just have phones and are wondering, wanting to take amazing photos. Truth. <laughs> the final thing, and the one that really blows my mind, this app is free. This is not sponsored by Adobe, not at all. It's just, this app is so powerful and it's free. Now you are limited with the free version. You don't get the, the local adjustments and you don't get the spot healing tool and maybe a couple other things, but the majority of it is free. You can go download it onto your phone right now and start using it. So definitely recommend it if you have a phone that you take pictures with. If you don't yet have a DSLR or a mirrorless or just wanna use your phone for more pictures, go download the app, it'll, it'll make it so much better. Anyways, that's all the tips. I think we did like 14 there, but I'm not sure. I hope these help you out because Lightroom Mobile is incredible and I highly recommend using it more. But for now, that is it. So don't forget to subscribe, like this video if you got something out of it. And as always, enjoy the journey that is exploring photography. I'll see you guys next time. Photo that I took on the phone a little bit ago, clearly as it's snowy really cloudy in, in the woods. And it, if you double tap somehow, there we go. The Lightroom mobile app is free. Free.